Hello, my name is Denise. I'm Glossa. For the past week, we've been discussing issues surrounding female, gender, and society. The truth is females around the world struggle with the pressure from media and society to fit in, play a specific role, and act in a certain way. We decided to make this documentary to show the similarities and differences surrounding this issue in other countries. This documentary features opinions and experiences of immigrant girls from different countries to show how we as girls feel about the situation. I'm Raina Joyce Vilyasin and I'm turning 19. I am currently studying biology at SFU. I live in Cloverdale right now and I came from Philippines, city of Cebu, and I've been here in Canada for almost four years now. My name is Paola Morales, I'm 16 years old, I'm a high school student, and I'm from Monterrey, Mexico. My name is Nicole, I'm 17, and I'm from Mexico, Guadalajara, and I'm a student at Port Moody Secondary. Hi, my name is Denise, I was born in El Salvador, I'm a high school student studying at Friend of North, and I am 15 years old. My name is Kulsa. Uh, I'm from Iran. I just turned 18 like a few months ago and I live in uh, Burnaby, Lohit and I've been in Canada for about 8 months and I left my country about 3 years ago and came, went to Turkey as a refugee. I guess I just remember playing with my cousins in the farm. Actually, living in the Middle East is kind of a nightmare for a girl. Like, when you're living there, you're kind of like, when you're a girl in the Middle East, you're deprived from half of your um, natural rights. So, you would be like, um, not having permission to whatever you want to do or not having the permission to choose what's like what's you how you want to look like or how you want to be dressed or who you want to marry with or um, who, uh, who your friends are like you you won't have any kind of choice like even though you're while waiting you have to get permission of parents and if your parents are not leaving or if they're not with you you should get permission of your brother or your husband a man like doesn't matter a man like because in my country a woman um, like a woman's price is as equal to sorry to say that but a man's one of the man's balls so it's actually in rights, like in our laws and stuff. And yeah, so <laughs> my experience being a woman in my country isn't really a pleasant kind of experience because I was always worried, I was always afraid, I was afraid of my, like my relatives, my cousins who were uh, like, Growing up with me, I, I was afraid of my, uh, maybe I didn't have really male friends because it's not, <laughs> it's not really good in our country, but I, I had many struggles being afraid of society, being afraid of people, being afraid of women and how they think about you. They're always judging you and I was always judged. Like, I was always judged because of my appearance, because I didn't like to be how they want me to be, or, or like, behave how they want me to behave. I wanted to be happy and show I'm a happy person, and they didn't like happiness in women. I honestly have not been treated differently because of my gender, but I do remember when I was younger, um, we would play and there would be certain roles that I would be entitled to play, like the princess or instead of being the knight or the one who gets to rescue. I, but um, apart from that, I never really was treated that much differently. I but have. In, it's usually and mostly in soccer with my brothers in this old team that I was in. Yeah, I guess it's 
it's like slight differences that I do notice, but no one else would. Uh, like, I can just tell when like I want to play soccer and I'm on the soccer field, I can tell that people just don't expect me to be as good as any of the boys. It is very noticeable and tangible because like, you can literally see how the media portrays women. They, they, they objectify them. They see women in a, sometimes they don't even take women seriously. Sometimes they, in advertisements, they show women as like an object to sell an ob They use women to sell objects like um, when they sell a certain product, like for example, would be a watch. They, when a woman's wrist should be shown but they show the women's body and stuff like that and yeah like drinks for men they also show women's body like they they use women as objects i do think that media does treat women differently but only because of the past and that women were specifically wanted for certain roles as um, girls you see them as models on tv and girls expect that girls expect to be perfect and guys don't really care. Yeah, I think the media, just the way they portray stuff or the expectations they have. Like on TV, they portray like guys as like really agile and like really strong. As for females, it's mostly just about their looks. Like if they were some Barbie doll that doesn't really do anything but smile for the camera. For sure, like media society, even though Hollywood and these stuff seem to be in a modern uh, world and like, you know, the first world and stuff, but uh, they're actually kind of fading women from what they really are. They, they're kind of showing it like they're something else. They're, they're not women, they're objects. They're like, they're like things that help you improve your life as a man, like help, help you improve your business, help you improve your, you know, role in society, your class, whatever you can think of. Even though there are jobs that are really encouraging women, there are still other jobs that that somehow indirectly discourages women to apply for or to be a part of that. Uh, for careers, uh, they always have like these stereotypical guys are the firefighters, the tough job guys, like they do the construction and all, and women are like the hair salon people and the beauty stuff. I think they always have those kind of stereotypes. But I think they're changing, so I don't think it's like a specific limit that they have. It's just like you have to kind of stand out if you want to do that job. They look at the women right away or they perceive that person uh, that of weakness. They perceive that person with the weakness um, characteristic because just for the fact that that person is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Well, men do have their advantages as has been studied that they have they get more they get paid more their salaries are higher for the same jobs there's a lot of expectations actually even like um, when you wear a certain clothing and especially that certain clothing is worn by a certain um, model who's actually who actually looks good you feel pressure inside inside of you and feeling that what if I don't look good just because the woman who is the woman who is wear who is originally wearing this looks so good. Like you have that pressure and sometimes you put the pressure so much on yourself that sometimes you end up hurting yourself and end up not taking of it because of how society expects you to be. Um I mostly notice the body types or how they they they're different, but then they're not treated equally because of how they look, like is it too fat or too skinny. Girls are expected to be like perfect and pretty and it's mostly just about their appearance. So I guess that brings a lot of expectations like how you look, like like the models you have to be skinny and all that. Um, but also I think like 
since they expect kind of you to be like less than men, you kind of have that pressure to prove them wrong and to show them that women are like better than that and they can be just equally good. You have that internalized feeling that you really have to do it because you're a girl, that you are expected to do this because of your gender and then and how society um, expects you to do these kind of things. In media, like, women have to seem to be happy even though they're not. They should be pretty in the terms that they think pretty is. Like, you know, the definition of beauty has changed and media has changed everything and people are always judging through social media and uh, women are always being misused through media, through uh, like any kind of media I mean and through society so yeah. All do have specific roles in society, not just women. Men have specific roles in society too. It 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 should be equal. It should be the same. It should be the same um, role and responsibilities. It's not just a woman's job to do this, or it's not just a man's job to do this. It should be both sides. It should be equal. Yes, I think they do have a specific role in society because they were expected to in the past. But now that society has evolved. They they have more freedom to do what they want. I think female's role in society has changed a lot through the years. I think it's getting better and it's becoming more equal with the guys' role. Uh, but yeah, everyone has this typical like female is like midwife, always at home, helps with kids kind of thing. But I think it it's been changing more into like they can actually like have work and they can actually become something big. It depends on the society, it depends on where you're talking about, like, uh, well, in many countries, especially in Asian countries, women's role is to grow, like, uh, raise children, get, like, get married and, you know, make men satisfied and raise children and uh, take care of home, take care of men, take care of their parents after war take care of their siblings. Yeah, this is women's role in many countries. But uh, in here, mm, well, in here at least they have the right to be educated. They have the right to be shown in public and in, I don't know, uh, in media. So in here, they, it can be different. It can be a bigger and more important role. I do feel safe as a woman. I feel like nowadays people are more tolerant of women walking down the street, for example, because back in the day they would maybe catcall or they would you know, call out to you. But now that people have just gotten used to the fact that women are being treated more equally, then they don't do that many things, so I, I do feel safe. I don't feel safe at all, but even back home in the Philippines and even here, I don't feel safe. But, um. At home in El Salvador, uh, it's a really poor country, so it has its ups and its downs. So then always like in a poor country, there's more people on the streets. And like walking there, I, I don't think it's as safe. And I try, I usually, well I only, I only lived there for six years, so I was always like with my family or with some adults around. So I don't really have that experience. But here, it's, I feel safer here for sure. But uh, still, I, I feel that I still have to be aware of my surroundings and who's like approaching me just because of the, the fact that I'm a female. But there is that constant pressure that we have to like fend for ourselves. Like, especially when you're walking by yourself, you have to constantly look back and forth. You have to look, you have to look behind you, in front of you, beside you. And well, for men, they don't really feel that pressure. But yeah, for us there is a lot of pressure and we don't feel safe around us. I feel safe as a woman in here 
uh, like because there is a huge difference between my country and here. Uh, like if you're from uh, maybe European countries, you won't feel that much uh, different in here. But uh, well, as I t mentioned before, when I was in my country, I w I was afraid of policemen. I was afraid of men. I was afraid of women. I was afraid of my own relatives and friends, and I was always afraid of misunderstandings and judgments and like the way that I looked like I had to take care of it uh, otherwise police would capture me like, once I was captured well uh, yeah I feel more like really better in here because I can take care of myself in here, that there is not that much pressure on me and I can take care of myself. Like even though there might be like uh, sometimes fear of like drunk people or like uh, some men I don't know who have maybe mental issues or something, but I know that I'm not alone in here. But back in my hometown, even though I was alone, society and the government, everything was against me. So yeah. It was because of my dress. Um, it was actually like these days, we, we have Ramadan in my country and I was fasting. I was coming back from my uh, English class and and yeah, even though like I had like we have dresses bigger than shirts and like it's until our knee or something, and I I I had bought it like a few months ago, like a few months before that, and uh, once they had like kind of told me that you should be you should uh, cover your hands, uh, cover your own because it was like. This shirt, the uh, my hand was showing, and well, I did that. And the next time that was Ramadan, I was fasting, and uh, well, I I'm tall, and I was going taller and taller <laughs> every day. In that and I was like maybe 14 or 15 years old, so my uh, dress wasn't onto my knee anymore. It was this much maybe or less uh, above my knee so they captured me because of that yeah and yeah and it, it was like uh, like criminals we had these kind of uh, boards in our hands <laughs> had writing like numbers and stuff and taking pictures and being humiliated as women yeah no that was <laughs> that's why I say that we don't have the permission to even wear what we want to wear. Just don't get too offended when people say sexist things because not everyone is the same and your idea of sexism might not be and we just don't want to get offended as easily. I would take karate lessons. Uh, I think to protect myself just kind of like plan it out, like if I'm going to be waiting for the bus in the street that's not very like safe or stuff, like make sure I know what time the bus is coming and make sure I like let my parents know where I'm going or like tell someone where I am just so people like know what I'm doing in case something happens. But back in hometown, they used to say, okay, you should wear a appropriately you should uh, you should not get out of home like after uh, sunset or something and but I I I never use those precautions I live I live the way I want to live I I'm never afraid of men actually that's I I don't care even though I was in my hometown and I was like 14, I used to go to work and come back home at 10 p.m. and um, and I was always like saying prayers to God <laughs> if, like when I was walking. So please God, no one does something to me, no one hurts me, and uh, because it was really dangerous. It was really dangerous and scary in the night. And 
uh, there were like men following me and stuff, but I always used to like, you know, pretend that I've arrived to my home and like go there or go to an alley or uh, try to like, like pretend that I'm talking to phone and telling them that I'm in danger or uh, these kind of things. But the last thing that I use, if they're kind of physically abusing me, I will physical, physically answer. <laughs> like mm -hmm. react. I, I've done it, so I do that. Uh, I would protect myself, I guess, by staying in a group, always having at least some friends come with me, or like family or anyone as well. I would try to stay in a public area where others could see me and not isolate myself with like a stranger and like stay in the light too. I would um, always have a whistle. That I can do for myself is I guess to walk, to always walk within a group, not to walk in dark alleys or not to walk at night by myself or always, always make sure to have full attention within my environment, within my surroundings, always have my phone with me, or as well, or maybe like um, self-defense classes, because I've heard some schools offered, um, during their PE classes, they offered um, self-defense classes for, for female students, and for the government, it, or government, they can, um, they can provide services, programs, or any, or any agencies to promote, um, to promote that um, certain awareness that just because women wear the certain clothing doesn't mean they're really asking for it. The biggest concern that women have to face is that um, the type of clothing that we wear, because the type of clothing that we wear is perceived whether or not that we want to be assaulted, rape, or anything. Because there's this rape myth that once you wear a really short shorts, skirts, or like you show a certain part of your body, then you are asking for it. You are asking to be this from other people, but you're not. How can women express themselves while other people expecting upon us to wear certain clothes just so that we won't get raped or assaulted or anything? For women's safety, I think right now since technology is advancing really fast, I think one of the biggest concerns is just online like chatting and like others like seeing you without actually knowing you in person. Like uh, it's really easy for others to judge you and like for you to make contact with others and then later on meet and find out it's a totally different person online. Concern for women's safety. Um, it's, again, it depends on where you are. In here, if you're raped, you won't be judged like if you are raped in Middle East. If you're, you are raped in Middle East, like the biggest concern in Middle East is to avoid being raped. Uh, in there, you will be like judged, you will be the one who is thankful for being raped. And the, like we had this girl in my country who uh, tried to defend herself uh, against the rapist and uh, she killed the guy and she was executed because of that even though it was self-defense she was executed because she couldn't uh, you know convince them she couldn't show that she's telling the truth and so I mean like it's that much of judgment uh, you you might lose your life, and if you're raped, you will either uh, be ended up to suicide or like fleeing to another country. But in here, I think social media is the biggest concern. Uh, 
I would stay female. So all the struggles that I've been through or challenges that I've gone through because I'm a woman, I think I would not change it any other way because this is what makes who I am. And despite of the challenges that I've gone through, and I'm still here, and that's one of the ways to prove it that that being a woman is something. It's not just it's not just um, a weak a weak. It's not weakness. It's it's something powerful. It's one of my strengths because because um, because of the uh, because of the women because of the women before me. They they've struggled. They've done they've done so many things to to change the ways of our society and. For that, I would not change and I would not ask for anything else other than just being myself and being proud of who I really am as a, as a woman. I definitely would still choose to be a woman. There's like a certain beauty to it and if everyone wanted to be a man, then it would be good. Yeah, I would definitely choose to be a female. I, I'm proud of being a woman and though there is struggles, I'm sure there's struggles for men too. And we were all made this way because otherwise the world wouldn't be the world it is now. And I'm really proud and happy to have all these experiences as a woman and to have like lived through it and fought through it. I'm definitely a female because first of all, I'm a feminist. <laughs> second of all, uh, second of all, well, if everyone wants to be a female, so who is going to protect female afterwards? Like, if I am a female, I should protect myself. If I uh, change myself into a male, if I decide to be a male, to escape from those fears, I'm a loser. I will be a loser for the whole, for my whole life, because you're female, your duty is to like avoid this situation. I shouldn't be just watching what's happening to all females. I should do something so I I won't choose any other gender afterwards. <laughs> There's a lot of things I think I could be proud of or become as a woman. First of all, I would like to thank all the volunteers who helped us through making this video by their real to be interviewed. The thing that is necessary to be mentioned is the fact that this is not the whole story. There are so many things happening to women around the world that we might not even hear about it. But the main point is that we as women in this society are tired of being misused, judged, raped, insulted and afraid of everyone. We are not objects, I am not a Barbie doll, she is not a model and there is way more to us than our appearance. Why wouldn't you hear us before seeing us? Why aren't our words, talents and thoughts more important and at least as important as our beauty and sexuality. This is a long way to go. We might not even see the changes that we want to see happen. But as a woman of this century, the 21st century, it is our duty to plant the seeds and realize that how we look and what others think is not the most important thing in life. We must show the importance of our presence in society as humans and not advertising objects.